Thanks for tuning in to the Drive On Podcast, where we talk about issues affecting veterans after they get out of the military. Before we get started, I'd like to ask a favor. If you haven't done so already, please rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. If you've already done that, thank you. These ratings help the show get discovered so it can reach a wider audience. And while you're there, click the subscribe button so that you get notified of new episodes as soon as they come out. If you don't use Apple Podcasts, you can visit driveonpodcast.com forward slash subscribe to find other ways of subscribing, including our email list. I'm your host, Scott Deluzio, and now let's get on with the show. This coming weekend is Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial start of the summer. It's when many Americans typically get together for a barbecue, grill some hamburgers and hot dogs, drink beer, head to the beach, or attend a parade. Although this year, many of those things may be put on hold due to the lockdowns that are happening happening throughout the country. Typically, though, we do these things to celebrate the start of the summer. But I don't know if we really take a minute to think about what the holiday weekend is really all about. In this episode, I'm talking about Memorial Day. What it is, what it isn't. Why we celebrate this day each year. And why this day has particular importance to me. So a little history, a little background history. Originally, Memorial Day was known as Decoration Day. It began in the years following the Civil War, but didn't actually become an official federal holiday until 1971. In the late 1860s, Americans and towns across the country started holding tributes to all of the fallen soldiers from the Civil War. They would visit cemeteries, decorate the graves with flowers, and pray. Then in 1868, General John Logan, who was a leader of an organization for Northern Civil War veterans, said that there should be a nationwide day of remembrance on May 30th. The purpose of that day was to go out and decorate the graves of the soldiers who died in the Civil War, which at the time nearly every city and village across the country had some of those soldiers buried in their cemeteries. Going out and decorating the graves is where the name Decoration Day came from. Then by 1890, each state in the North had declared Decoration Day an official state holiday. Southern states also honored their war dead, but they did it on separate days until sometime after World War I. Even today, some Southern states still celebrate Confederate Memorial Day uh, in late April and early May. So that tradition has continued of celebrating the the Civil War war dead. Decoration Day was designed only to honor those who died in the Civil War. But as World War I started, Decoration Day gradually started to be known as Memorial Day. And the holiday evolved to honor all American military personnel who died in all of our country's wars. Memorial Day continued to be observed on May 30th, but eventually, Congress passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, which allowed for federal employees to get a three-day weekend. Memorial Day then would be celebrated on the last Monday in May, and it has been that way ever since uh, this act went into effect. As I mentioned earlier, Memorial Day is usually celebrated with parades, parties, barbecues, long weekend getaways. Americans also visit cemeteries and war memorials, much like they did during the Civil War days, to honor and remember those who fought and died for their country. That last part, those who fought and died for their country, is particularly important. Memorial Day is a day to honor those who died for their country. There's a few military holidays throughout the year which honor different groups of people connected to the military. And I don't know if it's patriotism or confusion or whatever, but people have a tendency to thank veterans on all of these military holidays, whether the holiday is really there for that particular veteran or not. So in particular, I'm talking about two holidays. There's Veterans Day which is celebrated on November 11th each year. And this is a day to thank 
military veterans for their service. You know, people who have served in the military, this is their day. This is, this is the, the day to recognize them and honor them. Memorial Day, as I mentioned earlier, is celebrated on the last Monday in May. This is the day to honor and remember those who died serving their country. And as a veteran, I am oftentimes thanked for my service, much like many other veterans. A lot of veterans are uncomfortable with that sort of thanks. It seems, I don't know, sometimes it feels forced, as if someone feels like they have to say something, but just don't know what to say. It's still appreciated. I mean, look back 50 years ago when the Vietnam veterans were returning home. They were spit on, shunned, made to feel like they were terrible people, you know, baby killers and all that. I certainly prefer the thanks over the complete disrespect. But I also think that the thanks needs to take a pause for one day out of the year. On Memorial Day, we aren't celebrating our living veterans. We're celebrating the over a million U.S. service members who have been killed in action since the first shots were fired at Lexington. Sometimes I hear people say that every day should be Veterans Day. I think they do that to express that they always want to honor veterans. It's another one of those overly patriotic moments, I think. And I get that to, ex- to an extent. Uh, they're grateful and want to express it. But if every day is Veterans Day, then Veterans Day isn't really all that special. It becomes just another day. And if other days like Memorial Day are lumped in together with Veterans Day, then Memorial Day also loses its significance, which I think would be a tragedy. Many veterans were there when some of these warriors were killed that were honoring on Memorial Day. Memorial Day is a day of reflection for these veterans. A day to remember their friends who were lost defending our country and our way of life. I can't speak for all veterans, but I know for me, I don't want to be thanked for my service on Memorial Day. Save it for Tuesday, or better yet, save it for Veterans Day. It actually kind of hurts to be thanked for my service on Memorial Day. To me, it's taking attention away from the people who should be honored on that day. By honoring me or thanking me, whatever you want to call it, and other veterans who are still alive, we're taking time away from honoring the people like my brother, Stephen Deluzio, who was killed in Afghanistan in 2010. Or Tristan Southworth, who died alongside my brother. Maybe people want to thank the living veterans instead of honoring the dead because... They can't say it to their face. You know, they they can't say thank you to the people who've already passed away. They they maybe say it to get a smile or a reaction of some sort out of the veterans. To make themselves feel good that they're doing something. But it comes across almost as if honoring the dead doesn't really make a difference. But it does make a difference. See, when you volunteer to join the military, especially during a time of war, you know that there is a possibility that you won't make it home. And it helps, even just a little bit, knowing that the sacrifice you're willing to make won't be forgotten. So for that next generation of of soldiers who are considering joining, it's actually helpful for them to see these celebrations, to know that should they make that sacrifice, They won't be forgotten. I also hear people saying, Happy Memorial Day, as if it's some sort of joyful occasion. That and the Memorial Day sales for cars and everything else, I I mean, it isn't meant to be a joyous occasion. It's meant to be more of a solemn occasion, I think. In recent years, though, we've experienced all sorts of tragedies. And this isn't just in recent years. This is all throughout human history. The news makes us painfully aware that these things are happening all around us. You know, there's bombings and shootings and global viruses and murder hornets. (laughs) I mean, 
these are just things that happened in the last, you know, recent memory here. Uh, but think about all the death, destruction, chaos that has gone on around the world and sometimes in our own backyards just during your own lifetime. You probably can't name all of the tragedies that happened during your lifetime without resorting to a Google search or looking it up somewhere. I mean, sure, you can remember 9-11, Oklahoma City bombing, and other big things like that. I'm, and I'm just as guilty. But you probably don't remember all of the tragic events. It's probably a defense mechanism that we've created for ourselves. We don't want to think about these bad things. We want to pretend that they don't happen, or at least won't happen to us, that they happen to quote-unquote other people. Just like on Memorial Day, we don't want to think about the price that these service members paid, the cost to their families, their friends, and communities. For some of us, it's too much to handle. It's much easier to enjoy the sunshine on the beach with some friends and just say, Happy Memorial Day. This August will mark the 10th anniversary of my brother's passing. I, like many Americans, grew up going to parades. Heck, I even marched in them with my Little League team. Uh, you know, going to family parties, enjoying the day off from school, things like that. I always knew what the holiday meant, but I never really thought too much about it. I enjoyed the celebration and had fun. It never really was something that would affect me personally, or so I believed. It wasn't until my brother was killed on August 22nd, 2010, that I became those other people. Suddenly, this was something that does affect me and my family. I have a picture of him on, and I on my desk, and I'm looking at it right now. It's from my wedding about uh, two years before he was killed, almost exactly to the day. Uh, the day of his funeral was actually on my second wedding, wedding anniversary. You know, so I'm conflicted. Uh, on one hand, I want Memorial Day to be a solemn occasion. I want people to pause and give thanks to the people who gave their lives defending our country. Is one day out of your year too much to ask for? Actually, in, in 2000, Congress passed legislation that encourages all Americans to pause for a national uh, moment of remembrance at 3 o'clock in the afternoon local time on Memorial Day. And if you fly an American flag, it should be flown at half staff until noon on Memorial Day and then raised to full staff. Are those things enough? I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, if everyone actually paused and thought about those who gave their lives, maybe it would be. But how many people actually know about these acts that you're supposed to do on Memorial Day? How many people are still sober enough to remember by 3 o'clock in the afternoon is an even better question. On the other hand, I don't think for a second that those who died would want us to mope around all day feeling sad that they're not there to celebrate with us. I'm pretty sure they'd want us to enjoy the freedoms that we have. So I'm conflicted. Maybe there's a happy medium where we can pause for a few moments, think about the people who made all of this freedom possible, and then carry on and enjoy the day. That's a huge shift in my mindset from just a few years ago. I was borderline enraged when I heard the word happy associated with, with Memorial Day. There was nothing happy about it for me. Actually, for a while, I was living as if every day was Memorial Day. Constantly. But like I said about Veterans Day, it loses its meaning if every day was treated like Veterans Day. Memorial Day was running the risk of losing its meaning to me, too. So now I, I don't dwell on the past 365 days of the year anymore. On Memorial Day, I take time to pay respect to those who lost their lives. Then I gather with family and friends to enjoy each other's company. This year, I was supposed to travel back to Connecticut for Memorial Day. Uh, COVID had other plans for us, so we had to reschedule. 
but we're go- we were going to host a celebration of the 10 year anniversary of my brother's death. And I think Memorial day, uh, around that time is an appropriate time to have that type of celebration. The idea though, was to have family and friends come together, eat, drink, tell stories and enjoy each other's company. Maybe that's the happy medium that I'm looking for. We can still celebrate, eat, drink, be together, but we can also take time to remember the sacrifices. Hopefully I've accomplished my mission of telling you what Memorial Day is all about. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Drive On Podcast. If you want to check out more episodes or learn more about the show, you can visit our website, driveonpodcast.com, or on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Drive On Podcast. 